He really wants that revenge, and he's going to get that chance for it. So, Genji on the blue side, G2 on red. We're immediately going to be getting into draft, and already we see Syndra taken off the board. Yeah, no real surprise that Syndra's going to get taken away from Caps, although his performance on it at this tournament wasn't the best. He is well known for how strong he can be on that champion. Set taken away from life, and of course the possibility of a flex for Rascal, and there is the Orn ban as well. Not going to have any horns called today, Betty. Lucian also going to be removed from the pool. Very common red side ban. Don't want to give that first pick over. And Genji signed to target the jungle as well. There have been question marks around what can Yankos play in the jungle on the current meta. And Graves has been one of his go-to champions. So removing that off the board, definitely unexpected. Ooh, and the Renekton also, I think, directed towards Rascal. A very aggressive top laner on the side of Genji. He loves to go for those early trades. He loves to try and fight you in the top side of the map. Volibat and Renekton are two champions that he does play a lot of. So G2 showing that respect. It definitely makes me think that G Genji will want to get that Volibear at some point because it's actually only one of three champions that Rascal has played at this tournament. He's played Renekton, Orn, and Volley. So if he picks something else, he'll be moving down his... Uh, Priority Ooh. on selections. Lilia locked in for Genji, and immediately Wonder's gonna lock Camille alongside Yankos's Nidalee. Okay, so for those that don't know, Wonder is a an old school Camille player. He was a big fan of the champion on release, and he's always been quite well known for it. But this draft may also look familiar because game one of JDG versus Dam One, they were able to get Camille, Nidalee, and I think it was Twisted Fate as well. And that trio, that trifecta is incredibly powerful. And notice that the Twisted Fate is still up and available, Medic. And given that Caps is the roaming mid laner that we know him to be, I wouldn't be surprised to see that locked in for G2. It would definitely suit Caps' playstyle. He actually only spent around 50% of his time in lane between two and 13 minutes so far throughout the tournament. And there it is, Betty. Immediately locked in. That combo of the Camille into the Destiny, into the Spears coming out from the Nidalee, already going to pop off for G2 here. We will talk about the fact that Genji have locked in Callista for their key carry ruler in the bottom left. Yes, they have. So Genji, talking, uh, going back to what the analysts were saying, Typically, you want to try and play through this bot side of the map. Giving them agency with a strong 2v2 matchup is definitely going to set them up for success. And the Volley Bear, of course, coming out for Rascal. We already talked about this is something that he's played a lot at so far in this tournament. And I think during the laning phase, it could be quite a good matchup into the Camille as well. And I was actually talking to Whippo about it earlier on in the tournament. And he was telling me how, depending on how you build on the Volley Bear, you can actually match the Camille pretty well as the game progresses if you have a pretty solid start. So I think this is a good pickup. Interesting drafts coming out from both sides. I think they're both quite happy with yeah. what they've gotten so far. So let's move into the second phase. And I think the question becomes how many AD carries are Genji going to decide to ban away here? The Ash gets removed. Senna, a very real possibility as well. Yep. You can see G2 taking away some of the roam potential from mid lane by removing the Galio. However, Silas still up. And we have seen some Silas's stealing away the Destiny and then following that Twisted Fate around the map. It's very true. I think it's interesting that G2 have decided to remove some of these answers. They've, I think that Gragas definitely directed towards life in this situation, especially with uh, the jungler already locked in for Clid and the Galio is rightly said, are very much up for the Twisted Fate answer. But two AD carries coming out from the Gen G side. I think they almost want Perks to play either the Jin or the Ezreal. Those have kind of been the two go-to AD carries. Let's see what direction he decides to go in though. Maybe he'll get a little bit more aggressive. Wow, if G2 lock this oh, in, they're going okay. very aggressive in the bot side of the map. They're saying, you know what? If you want to lock in Callista, we'll lock in Pantheon. Yep. And we're happy to take those fights in the bot side. Pantheon, of course, really good into Callista because it's a point and click stun. You don't have to worry about her hopping all over the place, playing hopscotch with you. Instead, you can just point at her head and say, you're going to stay still for a couple of seconds. Follow that up with a gold card. Follow that up with some damage from your AD carry. Can work out incredibly well. Genji going for the tried and true Callista Eric bottom lane. So he seems to be played four times, I believe, over the course of Worlds. Only won once, but uh, life is actually one of the key stars uh, for like newer up and coming players, in my opinion, at Worlds. He's had some really good support performances and I'm expecting him to pop off again today. All right, there's the Azir coming out from BDD. I have mixed feelings about this, but I did somewhat expect it because when you look at BDD and you look at Azir, they are two Two things that kind of just synonymous. go together. Yes, synonymous. they are synonymous with each other. Thank you very much, Manik. And yeah, I, I think that what we have from Jinji is a very strong team fight comp. I think that's very easy to see. One of the great things about Azir is that he can get priority very early on, which yep. means that, as the analyst deaths were saying, get that push in mid, look to play through bot, and kind of leave Rascal on the weak side of the map. Meanwhile, G2. 
The thing about their comps, they can kind of be everywhere. Primarily, you look at wanting to play through the top side of the map, but when you have such a potent two versus two in Jin and Pantheon, it's very easy for them to tr try and match some of the action that were expected on the bot side of the map. So G2 going for a very aggressive comp, but I feel like they need to get this Twisted Fate out. They need to get those ultimates off and they need to be impacting the map because as you get later into the game, when we start contesting for those drakes, that's when we're really going to see Genji's composition shine. All right, it's a long road ahead of us. Five games, hopefully, today, Vedius. Both these teams are battling it out for a spot in the semi-finals. The winner will play up against Dam One Gaming. G2 met them last year and 3-1 them in quarterfinals. Gen.G played a bunch against them a bunch of times in the LCK, uh, LCK and will be looking for revenge. But in game one, we have a few things I think we expected. As you said, team fighting from Gen.G is their traditional style with the Azir in the mid lane. G2 have a little bit of roaming in the mid with Caps on the Twisted Fate. And the question is, will he be able to impact the other lanes and stop some of the domination that Ruler has been having in that bottom lane? Exactly that, Medic. It's going to be an exciting one. G2 versus Gen G. Europe versus the LCK. A highly contested topic, Medic. Yeah. Which one is the second best region? Of course, with all three LCK teams getting out, one already in the semi-final, of course, the other one being knocked out by that LCK yep. team. They have the ability to put Europe in their place by getting two teams up into the semi-final to then guarantee an LCK versus LPL grand final. And you start to get to this point of possible LCK dominance again. LPL are definitely at the top tier, but then underneath them, I think, would sit the LCK if Genji are able to win today and Dam1 or Genji battling out in the finals. And you wonder, you know, for the West, for Europe, for the LCS, when will we be able to challenge again? Because this year has not looked like our year yet. Yeah, I think coming into the tournament, expectations were low for Europe. Still being able to get two teams into the quarterfinals. Fnatic having a very close yeah. performance against the first seed from the LPL was impressive to see, but they did end up falling short. Now. Europe's last hope. Let's see what G2 can do. We're getting onto the rift. I think both teams are relatively happy with what they've drafted. And I think we're in for an exciting one, Manek. It's definitely going to be. Quarterfinals at Worlds always bring up a lot of surprises. You only have to look back to yesterday. Fnatic going 2-0 up, and then we got the historic first ever reverse sweep. Let's see if today's action between G2 and Gen.G can match up to the caliber we saw previously. So already we can see a ward dropped by Mickey. He's likely going to go back, change that ward over for an early sweeper, and look for a bit of early shenanigans. Now, when I think about the level one, I think that Callista Tarek is just inherently a very strong level one. But you can say the same for Pantheon and Jim. But I would be surprised if G2 looked to set up an invade. The thing that G2 have to be worried about is that delayed invade with the Lilia. Very common play that we see from many teams with the Lilia. But it looks like for now, Gen.G is going to stay safe on the bot side of the map. And it also looks like Rascal... Yeah, that's what flash. I was about to say. Rascal, I had production ping me. It says they think Rascal flashed. And we're going to have a look down towards this. So G2 ah. did go in for a little bit of invade. There's the stun, as you can see in your picture in picture, and okay. Rascal just flashes away. So that's a big loss for Rascal in the top lane, because as you said, it's possible yes. Genji just leave him on an island, and Wonder oh. has been laning very well so far this world. But also, look at Yankus' pathing. So he's starting bot side, and he's going to path up towards top. Of course, Lilia likely going to be doing the same thing, but G2 going to look to make some plays up towards the top side of the map, and Rascal needs to be careful, because if he, fall behind, if he falls behind early, one that is going to take over the game on the Camille, as we see a bit of trading down towards the bot side. And the thing with this sort of trading is, as the Pantheon Jin, if you can get a fourth shot in with a stun from the Pantheon, you can actually get a lot of damage down. And you want to try and get the damage to stick before that Tarek gets his heal. Because as soon as Tarek gets the heal in the lane, he's just going to slap you a couple of times with his axe, uh, with his mace, get all of uh, his cooldowns back up, and then continually heal this Callista. So losing out on the level two actually hurts G2 a little bit here. It certainly does. Stun comes through. You can see the combo coming out. Oh, that's, Ooh, that's a back, yeah. lot of damage. Mickey going to be forced to flash and really good punish there from Ruler and Life. That's going to put them in a very comfortable position early on in this laning phase. You can see that this priority coming out from BDD on the Azir as well. Very much what we expected. So Gen.G in this early game already have two strong lanes in both bot and mid. But now keep your eyes on Yankos. You can already see him pathing up towards the top side of the map. Hovering around Wonder's lane, offering both protection, but also looking for an opportunity to gank. Flid is nearby as well. He's actually just doing his grump right now. Rascal's going to use the stun there onto Wonder. 
And Jankos is just pathing down towards mid. Perk's going to get forced back underneath this tower. Doesn't have heal on the AD carry. Both these AD carries opting for the cleanse to get out of the stuns instead of going for that healing summoner spell. And Jankos will be able to start up this scuttle crab. BDD and Clearly are having none of it. Jankos forced away because of that pressure you talked about in mid lane, Betty. Good use of the mid lane priority. Clit also noticed that top wave started bouncing back as well. Jankos wanted to try and sneak that one away, but it will be denied from him. Now Clit can be the one to offer protection. I'd be surprised if they looked for a dive onto Wanda. But I think the main goal here from Clit is to just offer a little bit of safety. Oh, but he's looking for that gank. Wanda missed the stun. Rascal's just going to put a huge amount of damage down here onto the chameleon. And Clit flashes in, flash away from Wanda. Just about escapes. Uh, here comes the teleport, actually, as Caps looks to join the fray. Has that extra movement speed from the home guards. Has the stun card locked in. They dive onto Rascal. Rascal gets a stun once again. And first blood goes Genji. Answered quickly by G2. BDD's teleported in behind him. And Wonder has to dash behind his turret. Caps caught out by two. Nowhere for him to go. The Emperor slides in and gets his first kill of the series. Beautiful punish from Genji. The fact that they're able to find that kill onto Yankos. The fact that first blood even went over to Genji when it was G2 looking to make the aggressive play. Ends up working out beautifully for them. Rascal now going to TP mid as well. He's going to catch that farm, push it underneath the tower. And Genji are just going to get advantages across the board. So this early lead we talked about, the Genji need, uh, the G2 rather wanted to look for, already starting to flounder. So we can see here, Wonder still only level three. Doesn't actually land the stun. And Clid uses that as an opportunity to force the engage. Now, note that there's a lot of minions still there. Clid. If he was able to land that Q, likely could have gotten the kill, but then the flank TP comes in from the Twisted Fate. He's able to get the reset off. He wants to get this damage down and land the stun, but Jankos throws the spear too early, so he doesn't actually have that additional damage. If he just waited for Caps to land the stun, then they likely would have been able to just quickly get that execute and then maybe turn it around. But Rascal, he plays it well. He gets the shield off of his heat. He's able to buy more time, which then allows Genji to come out on top. We've already seen that roaming from both of the mid laners starting to come to fruition, mostly for Genji. BDD getting the kill, getting uh, a kill onto Clid as well in that top lane fight. Cap in that top lane fight. Caps is already moving away from mid once again. He was on a blast cone, looking to jump down towards this bottom lane, but G2 are a little bit too pushed in to get anything in their favor. You can see that this early laning dominance coming out from Jin G. The bot lane two versus two going extremely well, largely off the back of that level one. Now BDD does have flash. He's just going to slide out to safety. That's a lot of damage down onto Perks. And again, like these punishes just keep coming out. Ruler playing the lane extremely well. Vasco has the level advantage on Wonder as well. Clid looking to get that swell suit just onto Perks, but couldn't quite land it. And as you say, Betty, it's a big early lead here for Gen G. About 600 gold ahead. They're going to get a plate here in the bottom lane onto Ruler. He's got a 15 to 16 CS lead. Top lane is 10 CS ahead for Rascal. Mid lane is pretty even, but remember that BDD got that kill. So Gen G are just in a very strong spot. And we said in Pick and Ban, they're looking for team fights. Well, their laning phase is going well. Their team fights are only going to go better. It certainly is. I think that it really goes to show how Poor level one plays can really punish you in the laning phase and losing that flash from Mickey hurt him a lot, but now G2 on the offensive again. Hexagold made him into the Destiny Stormbringer. Will not save the Volibear for now. There's a kill in the top lane as the dragon goes down to Gen G. So Caps is able to use the ultimate at level six to find that kill on the top side, but BDD gonna respond by getting a play of his own in the mid lane. So not the end of the world for Gen G. Of course, the bright side for G2 is that they alleviate some of the pressure. Genji has been dominating this early game so far, and the fact that G2 get a couple kills back is definitely some good news for them. And Clay's going to use the extra movement speed from his smite to uh, just walk away with a blue buff steal. His blue is not up, although Jankos does have a level advantage while he's stealing away these wolves. And uh, seven minutes into the game, Vedi, that gold is evened out just a little bit. It's only about three to four hundred the difference now. Both teams seem to have come out swinging in this series. Yeah, I'm still keeping my eyes on Ruler, though. He has a level advantage. He has a huge CS advantage. When you look at the difference in itemization as well, the Berserker's Greaves are going to offer him a lot more than the Swifty Boots that Perks has gotten for himself. And I like what I'm seeing from Genji in game one. Early lane dominance, the bot lane playing well. It feels like that they're kind of getting the the, the win conditions that they want. What yep. the analyst desk was talking about, enable ruler, give him that lead, give him the ability to carry. And as Yamato said, once he gets that lead, he very rarely lets go of it. So let's see if G2 can bounce back. BDD senses a disturbance in the force. 
Is he a Padawan or a master? That's the question. Cap's going to step forward. Mickey goes in as well, and BDD. He's played this game before. He's been ganked enough times to know when one is coming. Just walks his way out of it. And I will mention, you know, we talked about playing around Ruler and getting him ahead. Well, Ruler and Life have actually kind of just won this lane by themselves. They were the ones that forced Mickey to flash away. They were the ones that forced Perks to have the cleanse. And Clid hasn't had to spend that much time down here, which means he's been able to answer Yankos, who was trying to gank Wonder a lot in that top lane. It's true. I think that uh, so far everything's just kind of coming together for Genji. Now we're kind of looking at what other options Genji have. I like this push in bot, rotate up through Rift Herald, and that was the next big objective I was going to talk about because it's a very easy secure for Genji. You can see the wave in the top lane starting to push in their favor. They do have good vision control around the area, and while G2 do know that this is happening, I think they'll be quite happy to just take a little bit of farm back in the bot side of the map, and they're not going to get too aggressive this early on considering the small but very real deficit that they currently find themselves in. Yankos did put a trap over the wall just to make sure that they knew it was uh, going on still. It won't be able to go in, so it's secured. Rift held nine minutes into the game for Gen.G. We'll see how effectively they can use that to get a lead. And the question is where you put it as well, because Ruler is the key, the obvious target for Genji. You know, when he gets ahead, the team tends to win. In five of his six games, he was a thousand or more gold ahead in the group stage at the 15 minute mark. So he is the key carry for this team. He actually outputs over a third of the team's damage in their games as well. So maybe you go down towards bottom lane and put it there, or maybe you want to look at opening up that mid lane tower and cracking that open so you have more space on the map. We'll have to wait and see. Right now, Mickey looking for another roam. He has his eyes on the top side of the map for now. He will be spotted out by that little ward by the Raptor camp, though. So, Genji knows this is coming, and life is responding in kind. Kind, rather. Both only level 5 for the time being. Jin now making his way up. He does push in the bot side. But I don't think G2 is going to be able to steal anything off the back of this. Perks is just going to walk straight over a ward, and Genji... They're playing very conservative. They recognize when it's their turn to move on the map, but they're also very aware of when G2 get to move on the map. And we talked about it in draft. G2 want to roam, they want to look for picks, they want to fight, they want to skirmish, and Genji recognized that, but Ruler may have slipped up. Ruler has cleanse. I think it was a blue card that was locked in. There's the cleanse. Ruler gets underneath the tower, but already he is down. Tanked up by Caps, the kill goes to Yankos. It was, in fact, a red card that came out from Caps, and while that slow did help, perhaps he wanted to try and bait that cleanse out early from Ruler. Either way, he holds onto it, uses the cleanse when the stun comes through from Mickey, but it is a kill for G2, and this is big. You know, yep. G2 was constantly looking for that pick, looking for the skirmish, and one of the big things about bringing Mickey into the mid lane is it guaranteed priority, because BDD immediately played more defensively. We saw him sitting underneath that tower. He was very aware of what was going on, but then Ruler seems like a bit of a slip in judgment there, doesn't show that same level of respect, yep. and in that small window, G2 is able to capitalize and they get themselves a pick. Small windows like that that can define it series like these. It's something G2 has done so well in the past this year. At times, they have struggled to find their moments of opportunity. We see them striking in this game. Gold now in G2's favor as they control the, the top side of the map. CS discrepancies still on the side of Gen G. You can see there's about 13 CS lead for Rascal in the top lane, BDD about 10 ahead, and it's about 20 for Ruler in the bottom lane as he looks to pick up his second plate but can't quite secure it yet. And we'll note Mickey now has level six, so look for that Grand Starfoil fall into a lane. Gives him just that little bit more pressure on the map. There's the Rift Held oh, used in the mid lane by Gen G. I think they will just get this tower. There's very little the Caps can do about it. He doesn't quite have the wave clear to stop, and that's going to be mid tower going in favor of Gen G. I really like this a lot. Going to make it a lot harder for Caps to roam as we see another gank in the top lane. Spear goes wide. Yankos not able to get in the midst of the fight. Yeah, I think he canceled a couple of auto attacks and wonder. Well, he has to walk away as Rascal just gets back to the safety of his tower. This means that now Clid knows that the jungler is on the top side of the map and can just start up that dragon. And because the mid lane tower is down, the sun disc arises and the Emperor says, you shall not pass this point, little minions. Gaining Gen G even more control over this bottom side jungle. Now, this isn't all too surprising, Medic. Uh, if you have a look at the G2 jungle, or Drake stats rather, they're not very positive. No. <laughs> They, uh, they average, I think, 28% of the first dragons in the game, and overall, less than half of all of the dragons in their games. Yeah, they don't prioritize early drakes that often. They'd much rather make these cross-map plays to try and get Wonder ahead, get in more plates, but it didn't work out. Rascal did a great job of playing the weak side of the map. He was able to sidestep a lot of the spears, and that bites the heals get able to get off onto Wonder healed him up a lot. You can see that even though he's been killed twice, he's actually doing pretty well in the farm department. He has a level advantage over Wonder as well. He currently still has his TP. 
And I, I just want to reinforce that Genji playing this laning phase extremely well. I feel like their comp is going to be very difficult to deal with come team fights. And I think that they've set themselves up very nicely for that. As once again, Rascal goes in for a little trade. It's just going to force Wonder away. He's sitting on the Sheen and the Phage, so still on his way towards that Trinity Force, where the Camille begins to come online, scales well into uh, the later portion of the game. This can be a split push threat, but at the moment, Rascal very happy to deal with the Camille. And as the game slows down a little bit, I do just want to talk a little bit about the history of G2 against Korean teams, Vedia. So I'll hold it for a second as Jankos is just going to invade the Wolves here. But the history of G2 versus Korean teams, because last year against SKT, they destroyed them. 3-2 at MSI, 3-1 at Worlds. Against Griffin in group stage, they actually struggled. They went 1-1 one and, one and then lost the tiebreaker. And then the quarterfinals versus Dam1 was a 3-1 victory for G2. And the question really is, is G2 good against Korean teams, or are they just good against SKT? Yeah, and that's depending on what side of the coin you fall. Different people have different opinions, and I think that this series is a great opportunity for them to prove that they are potentially Korea's kryptonite. But for the time being, Jinji have dominated the laning phase, and they're setting themselves up nicely for the mid game. Twisted Fate has been able to get a couple of good ganks off, but it's not really resulted in a lot. And Again, still a lot of this series left to go. Nothing decided yep. just yet, but look at that. Zero turret plates gained for G2, and the gold's still even, even though Genji have been able to get a lot of plates. But uh, this game's still up for grabs from either side. Two drakes on the side of Genji. Now, I imagine this next drake is definitely going to be a big one. Infernal map on the board. A lot of damage is always going to be valuable. And you can see that G uh, G2 rather have started to open up the map a little bit more. Of course, after losing their mid tier one, they've now swapped Perks and Mickey to the mid lane. This is going to hurt Twisted Fate's ability to roam as yeah. much as he wants, um, but it's kind of a necessity given the BDD is now towards the bot side of the map, also has the teleport, and they need him to be able to match. It's also very unsafe for Caps to just sit in mid lane. It's a very long lane. Potential flanks are very real, and um, he's only running the flash and the heal. So while he can likely get away from it, it's difficult for him to offer the same threat as perhaps a perk and Perks and Mickey can. Yeah, the chase potential from something like a Callista with the Fate's Call on a Tarek. The Dazzle is just so strong when the lane is that little bit longer. Caps is pushing in here in the bottom lane. Yankos shadowing him as BDD does what we've seen him do a few times. Respects the fact there might be a jungler on this side of the map. Backs away, gives up some CS underneath the tower, but because of it, Clid knows that he's safe on this top side to take the Rift out. Yeah, you can see something that we've seen pretty much all tournament long. G2 don't care about these early objectives. Yep. Rift out, Drakes, they're happy to give them up. They're going to make these cross map plays instead. They're going to look to try and secure some towers. But the biggest thing that's starting to develop is actually the jungle difference, Medic. Of course, Yankos has been a big topic of conversation yep. among analyst fans throughout the entirety of the tournament. Uh, Depending on what side of the coin you fall on, many people believe that Yankos can't play carry junglers, whereas I'm more of the opinion that G2 don't know how to play through Yankos as a carry jungler. And I think that that's something that they really needed to work on coming into the quarterfinals. And you look at his farm, I feel like that he's played around priority very well. He's done a great job of counter jungling and currently has a two level advantage and is one of the highest gold earners uh, in the game. So I think. Props to how Yankos has been playing this jungle matchup so far. Of course, as we progress later into the game, we'll have to see if that farm and that experience amounts to anything, because it looks like that he is going for more of the supportive Nidalee style yeah. with things like the Athenes. The Athenes, of course, does give you that bonus in team fights. You hit a spear, you heal someone, they get that extra healing, gets an extra attack speed on perhaps your Twisted Fate or your Camille in this situation. I'm not sure you want to give it to Jin too often. And now, Cleared with the second Rift Herald, has the option to uh, work his way down towards bottom lane. They're gaining control of the vision around where G2's blue buff would usually be. And with BDD coming in, this is very dangerous for Caps. Does have the Destiny, has Flash, has TP. He's going to try and walk his way away. There's the Rift Herald down. Life and Cleared waiting around the corner. As Caps just steps forward, and looks like the rest of Gen G are actually going to back away without even taking the tower, respecting the fact that G2 could close in. It's actually very interesting that they decided not to commit to that. They had pretty good control, but it looks like the Infernal Drake is the priority. Notice that both top laners have TP. Rascal already going to start walking down. A lot of poke comes down onto Perks. Half his HP is now missing, and Genji in a much better position as they use the Azir to keep the poke going. Beautiful control coming out from Genji. They don't overcommit. They just use the range advantage that they have, and they're going to get this objective uncontested. And we saw G2 so often give up the third dragon and have to play around the soul point if they thought it was a bad fight for them. 
Gen G gonna take their third at only 18 minutes, Vedius. 23 minutes will have an Infernal Soul on the cards for Gen G. And although G2 have won a game versus a soul already this tournament, it is a very precarious situation yeah. to be in. Yes, I would agree. Uh, typically, if you can avoid it, you don't want to give away the soul. Um, and I imagine that G2 will look to fight for the Infernal Drake, or I think in a more ideal world, they'll get a pick before the Drake spawns. Yeah. Then they'll have a numbers advantage, and they can use that to actually then uh, secure the objective rather than going for a straight up 5v5. But I think excellent patience has been demonstrated by Gen G. They've done a great job of just taking their time when setting up for these objectives. Uh, they've been very calm and calculated when it comes to approach. And this, again, is something that Yamato talked a lot about on the analyst desk. They are a very precise team. You know, they don't take a huge amount of risks. They're very controlled. They recognize the strengths of their composition, but now they might have been caught out. Destiny coming in. Clid is already down before Caps can even join. Red buff taken away as well by G2, and you said they wanted a pick. It's about four minutes too early, but G2 are showing some signs of life. But I think they'll be happy with this pick. They're actually going to extend the Goldie to 2k now, Medic. This Goldie kind of coming out of nowhere, and now they're looking for a dive. BDD stand up underneath the tower, teleport coming in from Rascalus. He wants to join this battle. Caps having to work his way away, but the bear is on the hunt. Caps locks in a gold card, Ooh. flashes away as he lands the stun. Rascal flash forward looking for a stun of his own. So it was really interesting because both pros knew exactly what the other yeah. wanted to do there. Caps knew that the second he stopped to throw, the card, that was the window that Rascal had to actually flash and stun on him. Because the moment that stun animation starts... Ooh, perks! It's just going to take a bit of a poke. But to go back to what I was saying, the moment that that stun animation starts from the Volley Bear, it's going to commit, even yep. if he gets stunned. And that's all BDD then needs to be able to dive in, get the Shurima Shuffle, and then secure that kill. So good counter flash then coming out from Caps. Here, all you see is Clear to trying to secure his red buff and not recognizing that the bot side of the map does not belong to him. So, good pick from G2, recognizing the mistake, and they've now got themselves a 2k gold lead. So, even though they're at a Drake deficit, even though they've been behind in farm a little bit, Cap's doing a great job of keeping that gold even, securing some additional towers, and overall, keeping the game very even. A very interesting game so far. I expected a little bit more bloodshed in the yeah. early game, honestly, Medic, but again, I think a huge amount of credit needs to go to how Genji played the laning phase. We saw how they had a huge advantage in the 2v2 bot lane. BDD did a great job of keeping pressure up in mid, and Clid was beautifully controlling all of the objectives, secured two early drakes, well, three, um, and two Rift Heralds as well, meant that G2 was kind of stifled in terms of their early picks, but that didn't stop them. They were still able to find a couple here and there. I'm going to take a second here, Vedius, to praise the support, because that's what I love doing. You know, I'm a support main. You're going to talk about the vision score again? No, no, no. So vision score, <laughs> who cares? Zombie ward, you're cheating, OK? <laughs> Mickey delayed his Umbral Glaive to get an Executioner's Calling. And if that is not the truest support I have ever seen in my life, I don't know what is. Like, no one else has, no one else has Grievous Wounds. They're playing against Tarek. They're playing against... Tarek, <laughs> there's a lot of healing, okay? He delayed his Umbral Glaive, that's vision, that's extra vision score, that's extra numbers on the scoreboard. He is giving up to help out his team with this Grievous Wounds, Vedius, and he has... I mean, fair enough. He's had a very good tournament so far. Just wanted to highlight he is a beast as the Destiny comes in. Clid, once again, the one they're looking to catch out. Life going forward, there's a stun on Clid. Babby caught out in the jungle and taken down. Life will follow shortly after, and here are the picks. G2 have been looking for, the curtains open. Mickey flashes the wall. BDD is sniped by Perks. And Ruler forced away as well. Now only two players left for Gen G as G2 start up the bounce. And that precision that we were talking about for Gen G suddenly comes out from G2. One pick turns to two into three, and it's going to convert into a Baron. What was a slow, steady game from both teams trading sides of the map, looking for picks here and there, has now exploded in G2's favor as they lock down the Baron and get themselves a 5,000 gold lead. Ruler and Vasco looking for the push here in the mid lane. They will be able to get one tower, but Perks is on the hunt. The flanking Jin is the deadliest as he looks to try and catch out Ruler. Perks has flash. There's a blast cone there for Ruler as well. Perks will not flash forward, but lands Ooh, the deadly flourish. Wonder nice. coming in as well. Ruler's already used his cleanse. Wonder has the flash, has the knock up, will land the stun. The hexagon made him make sure Ruler can go nowhere. Good read there from Wonder. You might be wondering why did he bother ulting, but Ruler was in a position to try and flash over the wall to safety, and Wonder wanted to make sure that he could not get away. Eight kills now in favor of G2, and the plan's all coming together. Who needs those first three drakes if you get the Baron? Look at this pick. It is that deadly combo of Twisted Fate into Jin into the Nilly Spear that you just can't escape from, and it was just kill after kill. It's so easy for Mickey to collapse on the squad as well. 
And G2, they never fell prey to going for those 5v5s early. They never tried to to kind of go for those situations where Genji could win. Instead, they waited for Genji to be moving around the map, trying to set a vision, trying to catch a wave, and then they looked to strike. And they've been able to balloon this lead so quickly off of a single pick. They really have their ability to keep Genji from team fighting is what has made these picks possible, the ability to catch them out in the jungle. You can see the level discrepancy between the supports. Mickey, level 11, life only level 8. There's a level lead for Perks, there's a level lead for Caps, there's a two-level lead for Yankos in the jungle. And even Wonder is ahead. And Betty, you said you talked to Whippo about how Volley Bear can match up into a Camille if you play it properly. Well, when you're a level behind and the Destiny's coming in, it's very difficult for you to do that. Perks stepping forward. Deadly Flourish will connect Stormbringer. They will make the Bear unstoppable. The curtain's open and one shot connects. Second and third miss as the fourth comes down. There's the stun card. Fourth shot obviously going to hit on a stationary target. And Rascal just going to try and clear out these minions. Mickey, I'm not sure you needed to steal that kill, <laughs> but I praised you earlier. Great kill steal, Mickey. Good job as he gets his first kill of the game. Wow, so G2, what are they now going to do with the Baron? Because they don't really care about the top side of the map. They have a wave bot, but there's no wave in mid. So BDD can actually take this tower without really being punished for it, but it will force Clid and the uh, life, rather, to reset and look to defend some of these objectives. They're going to be able to get back in time. I want to see BDD reset right now, but he does have the teleport because he's the primary wave clear. Remember, the Azir... It's going to be very... Ooh, hang on. Rascals wanted 10 seconds. Okay, so I thought that Clid would actually use his ultimate and they'd look to set up a flank, but <laughs> Genji don't actually have any deep wards at all. If you have a look at the minimap, the entire bot side is vision-free for the side of Genji right now. All their control is up towards the top lane, and this means that being able to punish G2 for pushing these towers is non-existent. So good control there from G2 to mitigate any potential flanks. This Goldie has just exploded, Betty. 6,000 ahead now for G2. And Genji, they do still have options. They still have a very strong team fight and composition. They still have a two item Callista with that Tarek, that Cosmic Radiance, and actually a two item Azir now with the Rabadon's Death Cap and the Nash's too. If they can find a good team fight, they can definitely still win out. Well, but, that's the uh, question. Can yeah. they find the good team fight, right? Because so far, G2 have done everything in their power to avoid it. They've only been going for these small skirmishes, for these small picks. And uh, off the back of that Baron, G2 have been able to break some out of towers, but the good news for Genji is while they are at a deficit, they will get that opportunity. They still have that fourth Drake as a potential win condition, and it's two and a half minutes away. Let's see if they can complete any additional items. Ideally, they want the Andres on Clid, but a smite steal, I think, is going to be difficult. Three levels down right now. And the um, thing... Sorry. I think that while he's done a great job of playing for his lanes in the early game, the fact that Yankos has been able to get a farm advantage, I think many European fans are going to be happy to see because, again, he's been a big point of contention before the tournament, yep. at the tournament, and can he play carry junglers? I think this is a great game that represents he definitely can play those carry junglers. And teams definitely played around him at times as well, making sure that they are going to him to find the picks rather than making him come to them. It's worked out well. And I was going to say, the, the difficulty for Clid here is the more you fall behind in the situation, the more you're going to fall behind. Because G2 step up into your jungle, steal away all your camps, you're getting no farm. The farm is then funneled onto the Azir or the Callista because they need their third item. True. And the Lydia is just in such a difficult position because you're trying to get back to like a level 13, a level 14, or even to get your own Leandries. Unless the team is willing to give up some time and give up some gold to you in form of lane minions, you're not going to be finding any, anything else on the map. So, the Drake is about spawning in a minute and 15 seconds. Let's use this very quick opportunity to set up some of the vision control. G2 have a control ward here, control ward here. It looks like that... I thought that they just used the Destiny there, but of course it's on cooldown. In any case, right now they have full control throughout the river. They have denied as much vision as possible from Genji from being able to access it, and they're going to keep pressure in both the mid and bot, and the TP is going to come down from the Twisted Fate as well. Notice how they use their pick power. Fate's cool. Wow, are they really committed to this? Life, there's the Cosmic Radiance. Wonder dives onto the back line, and Life's already dead before the ult can even come down. They committed. The sleep comes down onto two. Actually, three members of G2 as Caps now steps forward. Very low on mana, but gets it all back. 
think he used a clarity there. Has a stun card for BDD who pops the stopwatch. Mickey's dived onto the back line. G2 looking for another one of their fights as they take down two early on. The Destiny looking for that flank position as Cap steps forward. Cleared low enough to be hit with a single card. Teleport up towards the top lane as G2 continue their advance through the river. Ruler has nowhere to go. Wonder chases him down and slices him up with his legs. And now Rascal, the last one on the menu. G2 get the ace in the top lane. And what an ambitious fight start from Gen G. They had no control around the dragon, but they knew that they had to make that Hail Mary play. If they didn't get a good fight, there was no way they were going to get it, and they end up getting destroyed. G2 now with the ace. They may even look for another kill. Look at Wanda just denying the minion waves away. And it looks like G2 is going to try and secure themselves this Baron. Mickey taking quite a lot of damage there. They don't have the smite. Oh, of course, because the Nidalee is going to go get the Dragon Soul. But this, they're kind of spreading their resources oh, thin. Okay, G2 have over-invested towards this Baron. Nidalee went towards the Dragon. G2 back off it. Seeing that the teleport came out from BDD, they will get the Dragon. They'll stop Gen G from having any chance at the Soul. And with the advantage G2 have, they should be able to set up around the Baron once again. So the good news for G2 is because what Wanda did, it actually denied Gen G from getting anything else. So we'll come back to that in a second. Look at this engage from Gen G. Like, this is quite an engage, yeah. right? Just throwing the support in to just basically be a martyr and say, okay, you start the fight for us. But Gen G's then in that choke point that they can't commit to. We have to go back to live because have a look on your screen. You can see that Gen G committing to the Baron. Destiny spotted him out. Wanda on his way. Doesn't have the teleport to join the fray. Caps gets a start. Card. You can see Rascal locked out. BDD flashes forward, lands onto Perks. There's a dazzle. The cleanse doesn't get him away, and there's one kill already for Gen G. Mickey coming from the side as Wanda dives onto the BDD on the back line. Two for two so far as Cap's now going to step forward. Clint low, life low. Everyone on Gen G's low. G2 take them all, and three survive. Wow, that fight initially looked quite good for Gen G. They were able to shut down Perks almost immediately, but the gold gap is too big. Cap's one shot ruler with a single card. Wonder and Mickey doing so much damage. Support power. Pantheon, more like carry Pantheon, as G2 are going to look to secure game one with a 19 to 4 kill score. 15 seconds left on life, but I don't think he's going to be able to defend versus the oncoming storm that is G2. It was a close game until it wasn't, Vedius. From 300 gold, the difference to 12,000 at the end as G2 send a statement in game one.